You know that dream where it's the day of the big test and you finally realize that you forgot to study? I have that dream every week, it seems. Well, you know, that's how some people feel within a few years of retirement, and perhaps you're one of them. Maybe you feel ill-prepared. Maybe you think that you haven't saved enough, or you haven't planned enough, or you're just too late now to get started. Well, I've got some great news for you here on today's show. And as you guessed it, it's that time again, time to tune out the hype and focus on the facts. Facts that matter to you, the income generation. Hi, I'm David Scranton. It's great to be here with you today. So if you think that you're not prepared for retirement, and perhaps it's too late to create an ironclad plan, well, I've got some great news for you. First, you're not alone. And second, it's never too late. In fact, uh, it's always, you always have time to take action to help achieve your retirement goals. So please, don't despair. Instead, prepare and stick around Why share five last-minute strategies to help boost your retirement income. And specifically today, we'll cover why setting your goals is actually the best place to start. We'll also cover ways to help turbocharge your savings, why you should plan ahead for when to take Social Security, why downsizing your home may just be the right decision, and finally, why you should start investing for income now. And helping me out, as usual, is income specialist and best-selling author Jeff Small. But we're also going to hear from our guests, economist Dr. Lawrence Kotlikoff, and income specialist Stuart Chamberlain, and Anthony Saccaro. And as always, we'll answer some of your retirement questions. But right now, let's take a moment and let's look at why feeling unprepared for retirement is actually very common. And also, the first thing that you should do about it. See, retirement planning is supposed to be a process, a process that spans your entire working life. And for some people, it is. But many don't really get serious about it until their late 30s, 40s, or even later. And the results consistently show up in surveys. In fact, one 2019 study found that three out of 10 Americans over the age of 55 have no retirement savings at all. About 25% said they had less than $50,000 saved. And that's unfortunate. But even if you have a comfortable savings, you might still feel ill-prepared. You know, you start to look at things like inflation or healthcare costs or taxes, as well as all the other challenges and things that increase as you get older, and you think, I still don't have enough. Well, if that sounds familiar, once again, you're not alone. In fact, another survey taken just a few years ago found that the number one fear among people over 60 was not death, but it was running out of money before death. And if you think about it, that's really not that surprising. Uh, the idea for many of us of being financially dependent on others or on your 80s or your 90s is scary. But the survey also realized that most people uh, understand that income is the key to avoiding that fate. You want a sufficient and reliable income stream that you feel confident you won't outlive. So how do you achieve that, right? Especially if retirement is less than 10 years away and you're still feeling unprepared. Well, as I stress pretty much every week, it starts with your goals. You see, without goals, you not only lower your odds of success, but you also increase your stress level. Stress and worry come mainly from two things, lack of control and fear of the unknown. And once you have retirement goals, you eliminate the unknown and you could take control. How? By creating a plan to help you achieve those goals. And that's true even if you feel like you haven't saved enough. Why? because there are things that you can do to turbocharge your savings, things which we'll talk about in just a minute. Before we bring in my co-host, Jeff Small, let me take a moment to answer one of your retirement questions. John from Tennessee asks, you think Joe Biden's tax plan will have a big impact in the markets over the next few 
years. Well, John, thank you. And the answer is it has to have some impact. Right now, the market uh, momentum is so strong moving upward that even though uh, the, the president wants to increase corporate tax rates significantly, uh, basically get rid of capital gains benefits, um, the market seemed to be shrugging that off. Um, eventually, though, it's going to have to be accounted for in stock valuations. Uh, it doesn't have to be devastating, but it will have to be accounted for. Unfortunately, when is always the toughest question. And so again, thanks, John. And don't forget to send me your questions by emailing me at askdave at the retirementincomestore.com. And now it's time to bring in Jeff Small. Well, Jeff, it's another Sunday. Another week's gone by. How was your week? Dave, it was great. Did you see those, all those groupers I caught over the weekend? You know, I did, actually. I'm jealous. There were some big ones, too. They looked like they were 50 pounds plus. So good for you. Beginning of the season. I love it. Take advantage of it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Got to do it again. Great. And of course, one thing that we're to take advantage of here, I know you're excited about this, one of your favorite guests, is our first guest filled with knowledge, and that's their good friend, Dr. Lawrence Kotlikoff, an economist and a professor at Boston University. He's also president of Maxify, which you can find at Maxify.com. Maxify is a personal financial planner. Dr. Kolikoff, thanks so much for being back with us here on the Income Generation. Uh, great to be uh, back with you guys. Always have a good time with you guys. Absolutely, Dr. Kolikoff. So, you know, we're looking about, we're looking into retirement today in today's show, and we know that majority of retirees have not saved enough for retirement, and some have. What type of problems does that propose for society overall over time? Well, Jeff, I, I think, uh, you know, you're absolutely right. The, I think the typical, a baby boomer showing up with like $150,000 or less in uh, uh, in savings and assets. So they've got social security, they've got their house, and they've got um, uh, this small amount of, of money. And uh, it's hard to get by uh, because you could live longer uh, than you think. You're not going to die necessarily on time. Everybody thinks they're going to die young because they don't want to jinx themselves into thinking they're going to die late. So they, uh, for whatever reason, people aren't uh, saving nearly enough. And many people may end up living long, uh, being retired longer than they actually um, worked. So uh, this is a big drag on uh, the economy. And so far as, you know, if you have a lot of poor older people, it affects their spending. Uh, you need to uh, bail them out. Uh, we already have a big burden we're leaving for our kids. Uh, an, an enormous burden. And now we're talking about even more transfers from the young to the old. So lots of implications uh, uh, for society. Uh, this is a, a major problem, having the boomers in such uh, financial straits as a group. And You know, uh, another problem, Dr. Kolokoff, is that the stock markets are at record highs, all-time highs. And so over the next five years, do you think that's going to be more challenging for folks to have their assets grow or create income for retirees and near retirees? Yeah, you know, uh, it's, it's hard for an economist to, uh, you know, predict anything, let alone the stock market. Uh, you know, clearly it's a global economy, but there's all kinds of global Threat. So I, I could say, well, look, uh, you know, the stock market's going up, but it could keep going. It can keep going up. And the uh, U.S., uh, we could get out of this pandemic and everything could uh, uh, people could uh, hope to get the same six and a half percent real return on the market that uh, has occurred historically. But the, the stock market's highly volatile, as you guys know. So it's very risky. Uh, and then we got the bond market that's yielding um uh, in real terms, after inflation, essentially nothing on the, if you buy a long-term treasury bond. And then the, the chances are that interest rates will go up so that if you buy a nominal treasury bond, uh, you'll suffer a capital loss. So it's a very tough time to invest. I think uh, uh, you know people need to certainly pay off their debts and paying off their mortgage is probably the best uh, way to invest right now. Yeah, because a dollar... A dollar saved is a dollar earned, so it's it's that simple, you know. Uh, like Bear Bryant said, defense wins football football games. So, uh, so Dr. Kolokoff, you know, right after the break, I want to come back and I want to pick your brains a little bit about the economy to see how strong you really feel the economy is. So stay with us, please. 
And again, right after the break, in addition to asking Dr. Kotlikoff about the economy, we're also going to discuss some ways to help turbocharge your retirement savings plan. We'll be right back here on the Income Generation. Women are an economic powerhouse. We earn, control, and inherit more wealth than ever before. Our lives are truly a balancing act. It's not easy to juggle a career, a marriage, caregiving, and other life transitions. Yet we always rise to meet the challenge. Take charge of your retirement planning today so you can leave a legacy for your family tomorrow. Download our free Women and Wealth Guide to Retirement Planning. Find strategies to help grow, manage, and protect your assets. Visit womenandretirementnow.com. So I want to welcome back Dr. Lawrence Kolokoff, good friend of the income generation. And of course, I'm Jeff Small with David Scranton. So Dr. Kolokoff, Tell us what the first thing somebody should do is who's nearing retirement and evaluating their own Social Security strategies. Uh, well, I think they want to uh, think of, rethink retiring if they're the typical baby boomer. They're, they're the people that are retiring these days because uh, they're their age. You really want to work as long as you possibly can. And you want to delay taking Social Security to 70 if at all possible. If I mean, if you're... If you need to get benefits for your disabled child or for a spouse taking care of the child or for a spouse who has a low earnings record, uh, uh, you can certainly, uh, you know, it, it may behoove you to uh, take your benefits earlier, but in general, you want to wait till 70 to take your retirement benefit because it's going to be so much higher adjusted for inflation. It's like 76% higher than it if you take it at 62. So. Right. Basically, you want to, you know, we talked at the beginning about, you know, the fact we've got so many baby boomers in so much financial trouble. Going back to work and delaying retirement is really the safest thing to do. Uh, making sure they uh, aren't spending too much on housing, trying to downsize, move to a, a place that's cheaper uh, in terms of taxes, in terms of uh, cost of living, uh, paying off your, getting a short return by paying off a uh, Mortgages that are charging above, uh, you know, what you can earn by investing safely because right. mortgages right. and all that stuff. And I think, Doctor, I think Doctor Carl Clough, the key is, like you said, you know, people think they might die younger than their life expectancy would indicate. So unless you have a reason to believe that both you and your spouse really have an abridged life expectancy, the general answer is to wait as long as you can to take the benefits. And of course, you're the man who literally wrote the book on Social Security, so uh, we take that advice with a lot more than a grain of salt. But I, I want to, before we run out of time, I want to talk about the economy. The economy seems to be heating up. Is it as strong as, as the government seems to think? Uh, this inflation we're seeing, uh, do you think it's a permanent increase in demand or do you think it's more temporary and transitory? What, what are your thoughts on that? Well, we had a, a deep uh, recession because of COVID. So what we're doing, what we're seeing now is growth uh, it's going back to kind of a pre-COVID level. So you can look at the six or 7% growth that we might have over the course of this year and think that that's gonna continue forever, but there's no reason to believe that. It's just really a temporary thing to get us back to where we were because you had all these people who are unemployed or uh, uh, you know, fur furloughed, they're gone, uh, things are getting back to normal and they're getting rehired, but it's not uh, a message about the long-term necessarily. Uh, that depends on, on the quality of you know, the workforce, education, technological change, free trade, um, how our trading partners do, are they gonna demand uh, things, are their economies gonna do well? So it's all interconnected. And uh, you know, I, as long as we don't get into any shooting war with China and Russia, uh, or Iran or North Korea, uh, things should be okay. I mean, I, we have now, I think, a much, uh, you know, uh, now we do, we also have, you know, th uh, concerns about uh, are we going to be taxing people t too much yeah. for them to actually have incentives I to know. work? Are we going to be taxing corporations in a way that disincentivizes investment in the U.S.? In and Dr. Dr. Kotlikoff, that can that can hurt the economy, which can hurt inflation. So it sounds like your bottom line advice 
if you were given advice, if you'd be so bold to give advice to the Federal Reserve, it's, uh, you know, stay the course because this, what we're seeing is temporary, not necessarily permanent. Dr. Kotlikoff, thanks so much for being back with us here on the Income Generation. As usual, it's been our pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you, guys. And of course, today we're talking about five last minute strategies to help boost your retirement income. And so far, we've discussed how to get started. And of course, that's by setting specific goals. But now let's take a look at some ways to help turbocharge your saving strategy in the years just before retirement. Here's the first one. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Spend less money. <laughs> now, as obvious as that sounds, people often feel frustrated when it comes to cutting expenses. So where do you start? Well, it all begins by being brutally honest with yourself with an assessment of your current spending habits. You see, once you identify exactly where your money's going, then you can spot opportunities to save. And get creative. You know, use resources that you may be currently ignoring. Are you taking advantage of the ARP discounts for which you're eligible? Are you buying things on sale whenever possible? Could you reduce your phone or internet bills? But you know, these they seem like all small things, but if you're doing enough of them, you can see a big difference in how much you saved at the end of the month. And with that savings, you'll feel better about implementing certain strategies, such as increasing your employer match 401k contributions or making catch-up contributions. See, once you're 50 and over, you can start making these things called catch-up contributions to some retirement accounts up to IRS limits. But also, if you're not taking advantage of your employer's match, then you're, if you're not maximizing, then you're essentially throwing away free money. And if that's the case, then you should consider increasing your contribution to at least meet the annual limit of the company's match. And with that strategy in place, you might also consider working longer because doing so would give your nest egg more time to grow. It may also help ensure you'll be able to maximize your social security income something we'll be talking about more in just a moment. But now let's get to another one of your questions. Uh, Audrey from California asks, Dave, what can you do when you and your partner have very different ideas for retirement? Well, it all starts by sitting down, Audrey, and planning it and getting it on the table. And, you know, relationships are all about compromise, Audrey. I'm not telling you anything that you haven't learned over the course of the years, right? So this is just another area where it's about compromise how to find ways that the two of you together can get what you want out of retirement. Because only once you've figured out what that looks like, can you then now go backward and do the math and figure out how much income you need to get there. And really that's where it all begins. So it just starts with being brutally honest and having these conversations, blocking out time to make these conversations meaningful. So Audrey, thank you so much, great question. And send me your questions by emailing me at AskDave at the retirementincomestore.com. And now it's time, of course, to bring back in Jeff. So Dave, one reason people feel unprepared about retirement is they worry that Social Security won't be enough. And maybe they didn't save as much as they needed. Yeah, well, well, yeah, I mean, and, and, and Social Security won't be enough, right? That's no surprise. We're gonna be talking about that later. But the problem with the saving, not saving as much as, as, as they need, is that then people feel frozen by fear. It's almost like they, they give up and say, well, you know, if I haven't saved enough, then it's too late to start. Why bother even trying? I might as well just enjoy life now. And unfortunately, that's the ostrich approach. And, you know, you don't need, you, you know, as well as I do that, that, you know, that, that leads to some pretty sad stories down the road when people get older. It really does, Dave. I mean, that's one of the reasons why folks do reverse mortgages, because it's the last place they can normally withdraw income from, uh, from whatever assets they have. If their house is free and clear, they can create an income channel there. But other than that, that's about the only income they have. So you've got to save enough for retirement. You can't have a psychological block when it comes to saving money. And the responsibility to do that is on you as the potential retiree or current retiree. Yeah. You know, you can't beat yourself up too badly, right? I mean, you know, if you gained weight and you got off your exercise regimen, okay, you can't beat yourself up. That's not going to do you any good. You got to get focused on moving forward and what you want. Um, and, and if you make saving money fun, then, and you challenge yourself as you start to see your savings, your net worth go up, your 401k balance go up, it actually becomes a source of enjoyment. 
because, you know, as, as you know, Jeff, the reality of it is that, you know, you start talking about reverse mortgages, and that's really a last resort thing. If somebody does a reverse mortgage, certainly before the age of 80, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's not an ideal strategy. So, uh, you know, as usual, Jeff, uh, some great comments there. Uh, and right when we come back, we're going to be talking more about Social Security. And using Social Security as a last-minute strategy whereby you're actually planning to boost your retirement income. We're also going to be talking to income specialist Stuart Chamberlain, Jeff, from our very own state right here in Florida. We'll be back with the income generation in a moment. For behind-the-scenes photos, retirement planning tips, and upcoming giveaways, follow the Income Generation Show on Facebook. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch video clips, guest interviews, and to catch up on past episodes. Welcome back to the Income Generation. I'm David Scranton. I'm here with Jeff Small, and it's great to have you here as we talk about the five last-minute strategies to help boost your retirement income. And as you know, so far we've covered goal setting and budgeting. But now let's cover two more strategies. And that's planning early for how to take Social Security and the consideration of downsizing your home. So most people know that the longer you wait to claim Social Security, the more money you'll get. And it sounds simple, but it isn't. You see, having the best plan possible for taking Social Security is one of the most important decisions that you can make. However, delaying your benefits until 70 isn't always the best option. In fact, the decision of when to start claiming benefits actually depends a lot on a bunch of different factors which are unique to your situation. When you plan to retire is really only one of them. Think about it. Others include your health, your marital status, other sources of income, and of course, your retirement goals. Delaying your benefits typically does make sense, but not always. So you should plan your strategy before you become eligible at age 62 or as soon as possible thereafter. And you'll need an advisor who specializes in retirement. Why? Because consider that Social Security is designed to be a source of income that you can always count on as long as you need it. Now consider that the goal of an income specialist is to help you turn your other assets into the same thing, and that is a reliable income stream that you can't outlive. So coordinating Social Security with your other investments is the best way to help maximize your income from all sources. And the sooner you can do it, the better. And the same might be said of another common retirement strategy, and that's downsizing your home or the possibility of moving. See, if you're already planning to downsize after retirement, then consider advancing your time frame, reducing your monthly mortgage payments, your utility costs, and other expenses of home ownership in the years just before retirement can be a huge savings. You might also be able to move somewhere nice that's a lot cheaper, more reasonable cost of living as compared to where you're living now. And the savings could go directly into tools and strategies designed to help maximize your retirement income, which again is priority number one, something we'll be talking about in just a moment. But now let's get to another one of your questions. We got Kevin from the, the almost state of DC who says, I understand about investing for income, but I get nervous about not having enough liquidity. What if I suddenly have a big expense and not enough income to cover it? Kevin, great question. I'm going to answer that in two ways. First of all, most income generating investments are liquid. They can be you know, investments that could be sold. In fact, I tell people to stay away from things that absolutely are not liquid as a general rule. So most are liquid. If you needed the cash, you could come up with it. But also there's this dichotomy between liquidity and income. See, the less income you're getting from your investments, the more chances that some sort of uh, cash flow emergency will cause you to take money out of savings. But the more income you have, uh, then the greater chance that you'll be able to take care of that emergency without dipping in savings. So, so you know, you don't want to treat the symptom, you want to treat the actual problem. And the problem is not having enough income to cover those emergencies. So Kevin, thanks. Wonderful question. I actually get that all the time. And send me your questions by emailing me at askdave at the retirementincomestore.com. 
And now, of course, it's time to bring back in Jeff. So, Dave, you know, most retirees or pre-retirees, when they first realize, you know, hey, it's time to turn on Social Security, it's a very daunting or confusing issue because there's so many different choices and so many different dynamics from their own situation that influence whether they should turn it on or not, or do they need it or not, and then what choices they make. So it's really important for our listeners and for our viewers to say, hey, I need to find somebody that's an expert in this stuff that can help guide me through the process. It is, and that's why experts like like you, like myself, or our next guest, Stuart Chamberlain, same thing, have, you know, have software in your office where you can literally help calculate for somebody's given personal situation how to maximize those benefits. I get more concerned, though, with the people who don't think it's daunting, the people who robotically think, you know, the day I retire is the day I'm going to take Social Security, because as you know, those two decisions are really they're, they're, they're separate. They, you, you don't have to do both at the same time, right? Oh, there's no doubt about that, Dave, because there's so many other factors. You have to coordinate your resources from your other financial life other than Social Security and then commingle them so they all work in harmony. And that takes a strategic, well-thought-out approach, working hand-in-hand with a certified professional in finance that understands these areas. Yeah. You know, it's funny because I... Uh, it's been a long time since I've talked to any client or prospective client who thinks they can retire on Social Security alone. So you're right. When you think of Social Security being an income source that we all have, that's a great start. But as you know, that's just a start. It then comes down to turning all the rest of your assets, your 401k assets, your IRA assets, and your investment accounts into income streams. Something that we're going to be talking about in the next segment of the show. In fact, uh, something we'll be asking our next guest about. And that is Stuart Chamberlain, president of Chamberlain Financial, located in Boca Raton, Florida. Stuart, thanks so much for being here with us on the Income Generation. Thank you for having me. So you are you like Jeff and myself that you find that there's a decent number of people, whether they're really unprepared or not, they kind of feel like they're not prepared enough for retirement? Oh, absolutely. I mean, um, I come across people all the time that haven't taken into account all kinds of factors that can affect them negatively in retirement. When we factor in inflation, um, we factor in the cost of prescription drugs and uh, health care and things of that nature. And uh, an unre- unrealistic view that they might have as far as their assets, as far as what they think they can generate with those assets versus what they'll actually need over the next 20 or 30 years. So, Stuart, do you find that the people that you work with this year in particular are concerned about these new stock market peaks and the market's potential for crashing or going up? Well, absolutely. I mean, when you look at where we're at right now with the S&P being up in the mid in the last 12 months, about 45 percent or so, um, the um, you know actual GDP that we're expecting this next year is because of an event, because of the uh, actual economy opening like it has, and also the uh, fact that there's been so many trillions of dollars printed you know, throughout the world banks, throughout the world, and especially here in the United States, being thrown in the economy. Um, there's not a lot of fundamentals affecting or causing the market to be where it's at. So a lot of it is not based on actual fundamentals but it's uh, based on the fact that there's a tremendous amount of money being printed and there's a lot of debt associated with each one of those dollars. So, so yeah, I've seen a lot of people really concerned about that. And a lot of people actually coming into my office for the first time, Stuart, that are in cash and they're petrified to do anything because of the valuations being so stretched. And all of that monetary stimulus is absolutely crazy. Dave, what do you think? Yeah, um, there, there's reason to be cautious right now, right? Um, but also... You know, we've seen this before. We've seen times like this before. I always tell people not to panic, to stay focused on their goals and to make sure that their strategy really fits their goals. So, you know, in the final minute here, what would you say, Stuart, is your best advice for those that are watching, that are listening to the income generation that you feel like they need to have a grasp on if they're retired or within 10 years of retirement? Well, you want to stay, um, you know, focused and principled, and use, of course, a um, you know qualified advisor that knows how to um, you know work with them as far as creating a guaranteed income stream for life. Um, you know, the um, the one thing that they uh, they should do is uh, you know consider the um, you know shifting their mindset, like you know we talked about before about from 
being focused for so many years on accumulating and growth uh, to focus on the income, the I, <clears throat> and not so much um, on uh, growth like they have in the past. Now, um, you know, there's so many different ways of doing that. You have, uh, you know, things that have guarantees of income. You have things that, you know, you know different fixed income instruments that will produce uh, true interest uh, that um, they can depend on on a monthly or you know annual. But the first, but the first step, Stuart, is making that philosophical shift. And if it's a shift you've never made, that's why you need an income specialist because an income specialist like yourself is in some ways a psychologist, a coach, to get them through this all so important stage of that's life. Critical. So, thanks so much, Stuart. We appreciate your words of wisdom as usual. Thank you. And coming up, we'll talk more about the best last minute strategy you can use to help boost your retirement income. And we're also gonna to talk to uh, a repeat income generation uh, guest, income specialist, Anthony Saccaro from California. I'm David Scranton. This is the Income Generation. We'll be right back. Did you know women typically receive less social security money when we retire? On average, we earn less money than our male coworkers. We're also more likely to take a break from the workforce to raise children. Women generally receive at least 15% less in social security benefits. Have you done all you can to maximize your social security? Visit womeninretirementnow.com and download our free Women's Guide to Retirement Planning. Learn more about the challenges women face in today's world, as well as unique solutions to achieve your retirement goals. Welcome back to the Income Generation. I'm David Scranton, and thanks for sticking with us through the last three segments as we've covered four of my five last-minute strategies to help boost your retirement income. We've talked about goal setting, cutting expenses, planning early for Social Security, and the possibility of moving or downsizing your home. But now let's talk about the most important strategy, and that's shifting your financial focus from growth to income. And if you're like most people, once you've identified your goals, you realize that those goals, most of those goals at least, are income-based. In other words, they, they, it requires income in order to pay for these goals. Things like traveling, enjoying your hobbies, visiting your family, living the same lifestyle you had when you worked full-time. Those aren't the types of goals where you envision selling stocks or shares from a mutual fund in order to pay for them. You want to have enough income to be able to enjoy these goals at your leisure and with great peace of mind. And that's why the very best last minute strategy you can use to help boost your retirement income is to start investing directly for income, ideally before you retire. Because doing so actually lets you know instantly that your goals and your financial strategy are in sync. And it's not only logical, but actually dramatically increases your chances of achieving those goals. Now, if you're hesitant because you've been told that investing for income means sacrificing growth, well then I've got great news for you. That is a myth. As I've explained before right here on the show, total return is actually a sum of both growth and income. Growth, of course, is measured by capital appreciation and income is generated through interest and dividends. For most of your working life, you're actually investing for growth because that's your top priority. However, once you near retirement, that priority changes. Now the priority becomes generating reliable income from your investments. And of course, if you're feeling ill-prepared, uh, it may be because you think you don't have enough savings yet to make the shift. And perhaps that's true. And you do need to spend a few more years focusing on growth, which might mean postponing retirement. But in my experience, your lump sum is usually less important to achieving your goals than having your right strategy in place. And that's true even if you think that you have plenty of savings and aren't the least bit worried of running out of income. Something we'll talk about more with Jeff in just a moment. But now let's take one final question from you. Allison from Tex says, my husband has always done a great job of handling our money. Is investing for income something we could do on our own without having to pay an advisor? Well, Allison, great question. 
Um, it really depends on your husband. <laughs> um, you know, it, if your husband's experience is all growth, whether it's more mutual funds or more stocks, then I'm going to say you probably do need to bring on another expert. Uh, you know, I don't know if your husband watches football at all or you watch football, but the reality of it is that, you know, if you were a defensive coordinator, or I'm sorry, an offensive coordinator, and, you know, you were hired as the, the head coach of a football team, the most important role that you'd have to fill is that of a defensive coordinator. Why? Because your mindset thinks offensively, but you need somebody to compliment you who thinks defensively. Because as Bear Bryant said, defense wins football games. So in your husband's case, it sounds like he may have been a great offensive coordinator who helped you guys through the accumulation stage of your lives, which means that he most likely doesn't have the skill set to be a good defensive coordinator. So Allison, thanks again. And don't forget to send me your questions by emailing me at askdave at the retirementincomestore.com. Now let's bring back one final time, Jeff Small. So Dave, you know, I was thinking about everything we've talked about in the show today, and the biggest danger for pre-retirees and retirees on their money in retirement that I have seen in my 30 plus years in this business is volatility. And that danger has never been greater because people are more complacent than ever due to this epic stock market rise and doubling of the markets in the last five years. Mm. Yeah. Well, and that causes complacency because people think the market going in one, go in one direction and that's up. Uh, kind of like that 1995 through 99 period when the tech stocks pushed the market straight up, right? Um, but like you said, it's really volatility is how you start off your comment. And the problem with volatility is if you push your luck too long and don't make that transition from growth to income, you may have to work longer. You might be ahead of your goal and suddenly find yourself behind it. So it's those transition years that you always talk about, Jeff, the 10 years leading up to retirement that really are the time frame when people need to make that transition from growth to income philosophically when it comes to their investments. Well, they really do. And most folks, Dave, don't really have to be in an accumulation mindset. They have to earn a certain static rate of return by avoiding losses, and they will increase their income in retirement two, three, four fold from what they can generate from their earnings if they just follow a simple rule. But they get complacent, they get hyper-focused on growth, and they need to work with somebody who can help them with that transition to a more conservation and income approach and in understanding their numbers. That's right. And more specifically, a static rate of return, but a static rate of return in the form of income, period. That's the most important component because, you know, you can't spend principal. All you could spend is income. And our next guest, in spite of the fact that he's from a very liberal state, will tell us that you can't spend principal. It's all about the income, a very conservative financial strategy. And that's income specialist Anthony Saccaro. He's an attorney and he's also the president of Providence Financial, a retirement income store located just outside of LA. Anthony, as usual, it's great to have you with us today. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Anthony, I'm glad you're on the show today. I love, your, I love interviewing you because you're, you're so smart on this kind of stuff. So tell us what investors, pre-retirees, retirees don't understand when you first start to educate them about passive income. Well, I think the primary concern that I have with most investors is they've never made a transition from investing for how to get to retirement to actually investing in retirement. And the challenge is if you're invested in stocks and mutual funds, like most people are heading towards retirement, it becomes a guessing game in retirement because you have no idea what your portfolio is going to be worth in a year or two or three from now. And that what it forces them to do is retirement guessing instead of retirement planning. That's the biggest concern I have for most people that come in to see us. Understood, understood. So it's really hard for them to make that transition. So tell us how you transition them from a growth perspective. They've got this habit of accumulation their entire life, and now they've got to change their financial habits. How do you bridge that? Well, I think the transition comes purely from knowledge. Most people do not know that there is a whole universe of options out there that are designed to give you interest and dividends. Most people are just not aware of that because the entire world of Wall Street seems geared towards helping individuals grow their money. There are very few institutions and individuals and no marketing 
uh, uh, about how individuals can actually get income. So once you educate them, the light bulb goes on and they instantly realize that it makes a lot of sense. It's purely education, Jeff. So Anthony, why do you think the, our financial culture, our financial industry is so dogmatic about growth? The growth is the only answer they have and you can't eat growth in retirement, especially when the market drops. Oh, absolutely. I think the reason that they're so dogmatic about it is because mutual funds are phenomenal for growth and mutual funds are going to charge you some type of residual fee, oftentimes between 1% and 2% a year. And mutual funds for income don't work. And it's all boils down to the money. The fact that mutual funds are great for growth and, and you can make a lot of money, that really is the reason why the growth message is predominant and why the income message is just not out there. If you can do income through mutual funds, it would be out there. Yeah, you mean you mean it's a lot of money in it for those that sponsor the mutual fund is I think what you're trying to say. So last question, those who come to you who are just a little short, that are a little unprepared, a little last minute for retirement, but are ready to pull the trigger, what's your best advice for them? You get some advice. That would be the best advice. Don't go it alone. Check with an income specialist. Learn about income producing options and set yourself up so you're not having to guess what your retirement looks like. By investing for income, you will know what your retirement is going to look like. That's going to give you the peace of mind to retire so you're not having to wonder. That's right. Great answer. And you know, the, the, the answer could be you might have to work a little bit longer or maybe just make that transition from growth to income. Maybe you don't need any more money. You just need it to spin off more cash flow. So, Anthony, it's been our pleasure as usual. It's been great having you on the show. Thank you for having me. And thanks for joining us once again on another episode of The Income Generation. I hope that these concepts of how to last minute increase your retirement income have been helpful. And, of course, a thanks to Jeff Small as well as all of our guests today. We've had a great time here with you. Bottom line, if you're close to or you're in retirement, or you're concerned about your money, it's essential you stay informed and up to date. And as you know it, right here is where you can do it on the income generation. I'm David Scranton, and we'll see you next week.